Hey everyone, I'm Beef, and today I'm going to be building my childhood. <laughs> Back in the 90s, I went on a trip to a big shopping center in the next city over from where I live, and a new shop had opened there called Games Workshop, and I was instantly mesmerized by it. I wanted to know what was going off in there, because I saw lots of kids playing games and having fun, but sadly... At that time, my family was struggling quite a lot and we couldn't afford to be spending on things like that. So obviously, as a child, I didn't quite understand that. But as I grew older, I realized just how bad things were for my family back then. But a few years later, around 1994, I think it was, we went back and me and my older brother both got a box set each. Um, he got the 40k second edition starter box and I got Space Hulk. Probably due to the fact that it came out that week and my parents didn't really want us to both have the same thing because then it's like we've both got the same game, we can't share, etc, etc. Fair dues. Anyway. I didn't really enjoy Space Hulk and I wanted to play 40k with my brother so he didn't like orcs and he gave me his orcs along with the old cardboard cutout dreadnought which I absolutely adore but sadly I got to enjoy that for less than a week as my brother tore it up because I rolled a six yeah not very good sportsmanship but I suppose that's what an eight and a nine year old kid would do, you know, being brothers and everything. But this kind of left a hole in my heart because I'd seen the dreadnoughts in store and instantly fallen in love with them. And the fact that even though it was a cardboard cut out of one, I still had one and obviously it was gone. So it was important to me. So I'd save up my money thinking, oh, I'm going to go into Games Workshop and I'm going to buy a Dreadnought, an Orc one. But I would always go in with my parents and they would convince me as a child to use my birthday and Christmas monies on buying a box set because it's better value for money, which, again, is understandable. But that's the reason why I also have Necromunda and Gorkamorka and more time, <laughs> which I've, I'm not really into. But anyway, I'm going off topic. I don't want to go all the way down that rabbit hole of my childhood, but hey ho. I've been into my local Warhammer shop and there's a lot of interesting things going on in there. They're doing a monthly painting contest, which I'm now aware of, which hopefully my next video will be on that and they're also doing a lot more cool things in there because of 10th edition so they are actually doing a combat patrol league for new players such as myself so i got myself a combat patrol and obviously i'm going to start on the death dread so i cracked the box open ripped it out and quickly grab the instructions. And that's when the gears started turning in my head. I thought to myself about all my old memories of this and thought, I've got to go hard with this. Like, really hard. So, instantly, first thought, magnetization. So that's what I did. So, I started doing the usual thing, cutting it off the sprue, cleaning up mould lines, and I decided to give sprue goo another good go. And it worked. I got some nice, good, strong bonds and smooth coverage, which were easy to sand down and cut off. Very happy with it. I then built up the rest of it and started getting a little bit giddy at the fact that I actually had one. So I wanted to blue tack it together to try and gauge its stature and how I wanted it orientated 
and it were looking pretty good. So I decided to figure out how I was going to magnetize this. But before I did that, I needed to make sure that the magnets were going to be strong enough to hold the equipment. So I blue tacked to the connecting points and attached some magnets and then magnetized them to each other. And it worked. I then started hacking away at the mounting points with my clippers, which probably wasn't the greatest idea because my clippers are on the last legs as they are. And this was just making them even more blunt. So that's something I need to definitely invest in for the future. So with all the mounting points chopped off, it was time to test properly how I was going to affix the magnets to the guns and to the mounts. So initially I tried super glue, but this wasn't a great hold and I wasn't very happy with it. So me being me, I changed my mind. So it was around that point I remembered that this actually needs a base and I haven't really done much basing in quite some time. So I decided to have a think about how I wanted it orientated and where I wanted it to be. Next, it was time for Milliput and I had a few jobs lined up for it. So I made a big batch of it and decided to think of how I wanted it to sit on the base. I decided to go with a sort of broken city style terrain and I figured I'd do some sort of concrete beams buried in dirt and whatnot. And that was the idea going through my head. Next, I used the milliput to seal in the weapons and the mountain magnets. I then wanted to add a bit more flair to the base. So I found some scrap wire in my garage and decided to add that to the base. Then with the remainder of the milliput, I decided to make some more rubble and a little bit of a mound and also a bent sheet of copper with some holes in it. And as this is a 90s dream for me, I figured what better occasion to open some 90s modeling flock than this. <laughs> wow, look at that nostalgia. But with the help of a load of PVA and super glue, it stuck down really well. Next, it was time to magnetize the arms and equipped with my new razor saw, I figured the best approach would be to slice the ball in half, attempt to hollow it out and stick a magnet in and stick it back together. I then pulled out my new wow stick and straight away started to abuse it and started using it more like a grinder than a drill and hollowed out the inside of the ball. I then popped a magnet in and stuck the two sides together with a mix of sprue glue and plastic glue and bridged the gaps. Next, it was time for the main body. So I pulled out my Dremel and got to work. And would it be me without a casualty? Yeah. After I'd finished drilling them, I was inspecting the holes and I twitched and dropped it on my tile floor. Rip horn. <laughs> I then made up a bunch more milliput and rolled it up into small balls and poked it through the holes into the center cavity of the death dread in order to pack it for the magnets to sit better. I then set the magnets and used one of the arms to rotate it round in the socket to get a good, nice, flat magnet area. And with that done, I was ready to tackle the rest of the arm sockets. But I had a different way of doing it this time. I decided not to slice it open and attempt to just drill in from the side with the wow stick. It worked a lot better and honestly, I probably should have done this to start with, but I, I kind of didn't want to risk bending and snapping a drill bit until I realized that the wow stick is actually pretty wow and pretty strong and can actually do things like that, which I'm very surprised at. So it was a better way of hollowing them out. Yes, it takes a little bit more time but the end result, I think, is far superior. And with all the arms done and nicely magnetized, I popped them on the model to have a look and see how they would operate. But I noticed that some of the magnets weren't quite strong enough. 
so I added some extra magnets to the magnets existing in the sockets and turned them into more of a magnet sphere. And with that done, I decided to cap off the balls and seal them up using sprue goo and a nice bit of sanding and chopping to somewhat resemble a sphere. It's possible. You got to think it is an orc vehicle. Happy with this progress, I decided to fix it down to the base, but I decided to pin it as the weight from the milliput inside the cavity and the dread was getting quite heavy and I figured that plastic glue or super glue alone would not be strong enough to hold it in position. I then decided yet again to stick everything on it to see how it was doing. And that is when disaster struck. I realised that I didn't use the gun mounts as a way of levelling out the magnets. Somehow, even though I use my big mech that I've magnetised as my reference that I keep on my desk, I put a magnet in backwards. So one of the gun mounts wouldn't fix to the body. The arms didn't have an issue because the magnets rotate in the socket. So I'm glad I checked. But this means more wow stick abuse. So after about two and a half hours of careful drilling and scraping and chopping, I finally managed to get the magnets out. And in my infinite wisdom, that is my fibromyalgia brain, I put them back in backwards, along with half a tub of super glue. Two days, one broken drill bit, one broken hobby knife, one fit of rage, and one giant gouge out the side of the model, and it was out. That's the reason why this video is late. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I am going to double, triple, quadruple check magnets in the future. This was ridiculous. I was so close to just throwing this all in the bin and giving up on it, but I powered through, I calmed down, and I did it. <laughs> now it was time to do a full damage assessment to see what damages I'd actually done to the model whilst trying to get those magnets out. And aside from the giant gouge and the sprained socket, I'd knocked off one of the little spikes off of its leg, rounded off one of the rivets, bent the shoulders, and bent the flagpole, banner pole, pole thing. Yeah, that. So, I tried my best to patch them up as best I could with a mix of sprue glue and just plastic glue on top. I got everything back into shape. I chopped a pointy bit off of some of the spike that I had hanging around and replaced the one on the leg. And it was finally ready for priming. So I decided to do a slightly different approach with my priming. I am not using blue tack this time. I decided to take the wow stick and do some small holes in mounting areas and areas that aren't going to be seen and threading a paper clip into them to double up as a painting holder as well as an easier way to spray with the correct orientation. And with that, it was done. Ish. But... The painting will have to wait for next time. Ah, This one has been a slug. It's been enjoyable. And I honestly, I can't wait to actually do some brushwork on it. But I will be picking this back up in maybe two weeks time. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm entering a painting contest. My first ever painting contest. Me being a newbie, I, I want to try push myself so I'm going to do something creative and I've gone out and splurged on something very silly so 
stay tuned for the next episode. I hope you enjoy it. And again, don't forget to subscribe for me. And I do have a Patreon if you are interested in supporting me uh, help correct my mistakes more than anything. <laughs> so, yeah, don't forget to take care of yourselves and have a good one.